Today, down in the comments, I want to know what is the best horror-themed gift you ever received. Ho, ho, ho! I'm Adam Caesar. Uh, I am a horror writer, uh, but I have this YouTube channel where I take a uh, new release or reissue horror film and then pair it with a piece of horror literature that you will enjoy reading if you like that movie. Today we're taking a break from the normal format and I wanted to present you with a number of new release movies uh, and a couple books uh, that the horror fan in your life, or just you, if you've, uh, if you've got a bunch of gift cards lying around after the holidays, uh, would enjoy getting. Now I'm calling this a holiday gift guide, but it's by no means like kind of best of the year roundup. If you wanted something like that, I will put together a, uh, a playlist in this corner or in this corner of the kind of the best stuff that I've reviewed, the things that I think are the best uh, over the last year. I kind of don't want to waste a video talking about stuff I've already talked about. So this is gonna be all new stuff, stuff I haven't talked about before. As with all my videos, I'm gonna put links down into the, in the description of where you can buy these. Uh, some of them are limited editions and some of them are uh, through vendors. They're still uh, recuperating from their Black Friday uh, sales, uh, but keep clicking the links and they'll be live, I'm sure, at some point. Again, if you like this video and if you want to see uh, more of me talking about uh, horror and cult films, uh, make sure to subscribe to this channel, make sure to hit the thumbs up, and uh, away we go. So today we're going to be taking a look at a number of, uh, of, of new releases uh, from Vinegar Syndrome and from Arrow Video, who are kind of the two usual suspects, uh, stuff I talk about a lot on this channel. Uh, but these are things we haven't talked about yet. Uh, and and if you, uh, if someone in your life loves horror or if someone in your life is a uh, is kind of first getting into cult or weird cinema and you don't want to exactly throw them into the deep end with like uh euro horror sleaze weirdness uh but you want to give them something they're definitely not expecting <laughs> tammy and the t-rex um which is a film incredible in incredibly bad taste uh but also halfway a kids movie it's very strange Vinegar Syndrome just put this out, and uh, this movie was released in 1994, one year after uh, Jurassic Park stomped into cinemas. But this was originally released in 1994, I believe straight to video, in a highly truncated PG-13 cut. Uh, this film stars Janice Richards and Paul Walker, both in early roles, both looking very baby-faced. Um, it's got a number of other... Uh, character actors and uh, cult movie kind of staples in it. Directed by a guy uh, named Stuart Raffle, who has uh, been doing a number of things in Hollywood. Uh, he had a contact that called him up one day and was like, uh, I have a giant animatronic T-Rex that's meant to go in a theme park. Do you think we could build a low budget movie around it? And that is why uh, Tammy and the teenage T-Rex which it's sometimes called, which the director calls it on the special features. Uh, Tammy and the T-Rex is born, uh, but they shot a whole bunch of gore. And if you've seen the film before, you've probably seen it uh, in, its, in its kids' movie cut. Uh, but it is a, um, a gory, um, kind of vulgar, kind of gross, kind of super dumb uh, movie. But you're not going to see all that many movies uh, about uh, Paul Walker uh, dying after a lion attack and his uh, brain being transported, uh, being transplanted into a uh, freestanding animatronic uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex and him and his girlfriend uh, taking revenge on the doctors that did it. You're never really going to see a movie like that uh, ever again. <laughs> That's why I guess uh, Tammy and the T-Rex is Vinegar Syndrome's first 4K Ultra HD release. I almost think this is, this is halfway trolling. This is halfway a joke. Why would you, why would you make this movie uh, the, your first ultra high definition release? Uh, I guess it's because they really believe in it. And uh, the movie is, is, is by no means uh, a masterpiece, uh, but is certainly uh, something that is uh, a wonder to behold. The Vinegar Syndrome does a really good job of uh, talking with the people that made this and trying to contextualize it and trying to be like, how the hell did this movie even exist? They even talked to Denise Richards in here, which is a very nice uh, chat, and she seems very nice. But uh, Tammy and the T-Rex, uh, if you want a stocking stuffer, uh, that uh, might alienate uh, and upset uh, whoever you're giving it to. This is the movie. Next, uh, actually good movies. We were talking about Hellraiser and Hellraiser 2, Hellbound, or Hellbound, colon, Hellraiser 2. One of the best horror sequels 
of all time, in my opinion. Uh, these are worth mentioning because you couldn't get them uh, up until very recently. Uh, Arrow had, had, had made a really cool box set called The Scarlet Box. Uh, and it was the trilogy. It was the first three uh, Hellraiser films in a very nice box. Uh, but that's long out of print, and it's selling like for a lot on like eBay and stuff like that with secondary vendors. Uh, but uh, they did just recently, and they didn't make a, a lot of hay about doing this, but they just recently released uh, these as standalone editions. And they come with all, almost all uh, the features from the, the big, big uh, edition. Uh, they're really, really worth getting. And if uh, someone on your list or you yourself uh, doesn't have them, uh, I highly, highly, highly recommend them. Uh, Hellraiser, of course, uh, written and directed uh, by Clive Barker, the incredible Clive Barker, from his own uh, no novella, The Hellbound Heart. Uh, these features are great. This is like, these are two kind of film school in a boxy type uh, presentations of these movies. Arrow is always kind of bumping up against like, are they doing criterion level uh, work uh, for films that may not normally get it? Uh, but these are two superlative uh, releases Hellbound, directed by the uh, ultra under underrated Tony Randall, who we're actually going to talk about a little bit later too. These are both great. Uh, they're not. Don't look at them as thinking like, oh, these are like bare bones releases because they're not in the box set. They aren't. They're they've got everything. Uh, and whoever on your list would be very happy to have these. And speaking of Tony Randall, uh, and speaking uh, of box sets, and speaking of things that kind of like. Uh, if you're gonna give something as a gift, you kind of want it to have a little bit of a wow factor. Uh, Vinegar Syndrome has also released this. It's called the Amityville Cursed Collection. Um, ooh, you got those iconic Lyle and windows that look like eyes. And then you have inside, you have <laughs> four films uh, that were not shot anywhere near Long Island. Um, this is the a collection of four of the Amityville horror sequels uh, that center around cursed objects. There are objects, there's basically a yard, an Amityville yard sale. Um, we've got a lamp, uh, a clock, a mirror, and a dollhouse replica of the of the Amityville house itself. And they all happen to end up uh, around the LA area, around the California uh, area. Now these, uh, I'm not gonna lie, these definitely vary in quality. The first one is um, made for TV. It's super charming. Uh, I was texting with some of my buddies that got this and they didn't find it as charming as I did but that's the lamp one I think it's great I think it's really fun again made for TV uh, not as distasteful or disreputable as this series um, seems like it can really go especially with um, Amityville 2 the possession uh, this is kind of the the wearing kid gloves version of uh, Amityville but still uh, plenty to, here to enjoy and we have Amityville 1992, It's About Time, which is definitely the standout of the set. This one was directed by Hellbound, Hellraiser 2's uh, Tony Randall. Uh, it's really, really great. Uh, it is about the, a cursed clock that shows up in this home. And uh, it starts uh, messing with the family there. Uh, but instead of just doing the kind of Amityville bleeding walls, uh, you know, group of flies, uh, kind of bag of tricks, uh, it, it starts messing with time, and you find that it was, like, cursed way before uh, it showed up on Long Island. It was cursed by this, like, warlock and these Satanists and all this different stuff. And it, it's, it's got some really cool images in it. Uh, it is, it is uh, you know, a low-budget horror film uh, from 1992, uh, so it does have that kind of feel to it, but in such a, a pleasant, nice way. Um, highly recommend this. Um, the set is, is great, but this is a, a standout among them. Uh, and then we've got Amityville, A New Generation, uh, Haunted Mirrors, and the Amityville Dollhouse, which is just a great concept, and there's a lot of kind of um, practical effects in all of these, and they really do feel like a nice time capsule of, we talk about 80s horror, we talk about 70s horror, we talk about 60s horror. Uh, when we talk about 90s horror, we're usually doing it with an asterisk with caveats um, but I feel like we've got enough distance from these movies now that we can see that there is a, a certain charm to them a certain style to them uh, a certain weirdness to them uh, because they were made before you could make straight to video things and straight to TV things that were very uh, 
cheap and bad and disposable, they don't have that disposable quality to them. They have that tactile, handmade feeling to them, even if they are kind of garish and gross and like, oh, it's they're barely Animedieville movies because the house doesn't show up in them, Long Island doesn't show up in them. Uh, they kind of lose track of that religious thread, some of them. As far as just wow factor of having a nice box to put things in and a nice box to put under the tree, very, very, very uh, easy to recommend. Especially if you compare it to uh, the Scream Factory set. Uh, still wouldn't get you all the Amityville movies because there are like 8,000 of these things and they're all kind of, um, you're even missing a few contiguously here and then they go on forever and will go on forever and I'm sure producers are going to be capitalizing on real world uh, tragedy and murder forever. Uh, but again, good companion pieces if they've already got the Scream Factory set. And lastly, but not leastly, uh, the Ringu Collection. These are the, uh, it looks like three discs, but, uh, and it is three discs, uh, and it looks like three films, uh, but this is uh, four uh, of the original Ring uh, films from Japan. Uh, very, very, very easy to recommend. Uh, very, very easy to forget uh, that I think we all talk about uh, Ring, uh, especially in the context of Gore Verbinski's remake, which is great. It's one of the best horror remakes ever. It's uh, spooky and scary and, and incredibly great, and Naomi Watts is great in it, but I think what gets lost a lot is Hideo Nakata's uh, original film is scary as hell and started this whole revolution uh, in in horror movies, for better and for worse, uh, this whole trend in horror movies and ghost horror movies, uh, Ring is is one of the scariest, best put together uh, ghost movies. Not really haunted house movies, but ghost movies uh, I've ever seen, and it is well, 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 well worth uh, revisiting uh, because I feel like the way a lot of us originally saw it, a lot of horror fans in the U.S. originally saw it, as we saw it, like there was a guy at my local mall on Long Island that would sell um, bootlegs of Hong Kong movies and uh, Japanese films and import uh, movies with fan subtitles and he'd sell the discs. Um, some of them were VCDs, some of them were, uh, some of them were DVDs. Uh, and he'd sell them their bootlegs and he'd sell them at the mall and it was like the mall kiosk where you went and got all this stuff. And the transfers on those things were terrible and the translations were terrible. So I'd, I feel like I'd, I'd only ever seen Ring looking like crap and in my mind, I was like, well, Gore Verbinski's is actually better because it looks more like a real movie and stuff like that. That is not the case. These these movies, especially the first one, are gorgeous. They look really, really great, and Arrow has done an incredible job in this box set. A ton of uh, a ton of materials on here. At least for the first one, there's it airs kind of close to just a lot of talking heads talking about the movies, uh, not about the production themselves, uh, but there's a ton of good stuff in here, and it comes with a little, little perfect bound book. Um, just, just great stuff, and you can have uh, a hell of a um, paranoid weekend uh, anytime the phone rings, anytime you see an errant VHS tape. Uh, if you if you sit down and you watch uh, Ringu, Ringu, Ringu Two, Ringu Zero, and I forget, I always forget what the oh Spiral, the the kind of unofficial sequel where they made Spiral and then they were like, wait a second, let's just call it Ringu Ringu Two, and they made a different movie. Um, well, well worth uh, checking out. Arrow did a great job here. This week's book recommendation, uh, because it's out in hardcover, um, because it just like made like the uh, New York Times like a uh, notable books list. Uh, Paul Tremblay's Growing Things. Uh, I have not made it all the way through this collection yet. I'm I'm kind of piecing it up. It is a collection of short fiction. If you like Head Full of Ghosts, if you like Disappearance of Devil Rock, uh, if you like uh, Cabin at the End of the World, uh, if you like his longer fiction, you really will uh, enjoy his short fiction. Uh, this is uh, literary uh, horror with a capital L, but also a capital H, because it is uh, some of the stuff is quite unsettling, quite scary, um, but very much um, challenges the reader in a formal way. Challenges them in a. This is not. These are not classic uh, old Dark Knight stories. These are these are real thinkers, uh, <laughs> and I really, really, really enjoy them. And again, uh, for gifting, nice hardback, nice hardcover. Uh, you'll get someone, uh, some something nice looking they can put on their shelves uh, outside of like, instead of giving them a gift card and being like, yeah, go get an ebook or whatever. Uh, get them something nice. Also, as far as book recommendations go, if you are a fan of the channel, if you like 
uh, watching me in a very sporadic upload schedule if you like watching me talk about movies, if you like watching me talk about books, uh, and if you have not checked out my books, I've got a ton of those that you can put under the tree as well. Uh, I've got paperbacks, I've got ebooks, I've got audiobooks if you like uh, listening to things that are expertly uh, narrated uh, by professionals who are not me. When you buy those, you really help me out, you really help the channel out. When you review them on Amazon, when you review them on Goodreads, when you tell your friends about them, when you uh, recommend them, it really, really, really helps me out. Uh, and this year, uh, especially, I'm very, very thankful for everyone who has picked up a book, who has checked out my work, uh, who has told a friend about my work. Uh, and uh, it's all gonna kind of pay off in 2020 because I have in my hands Clown in the Cornfield by Adam Caesar. That's me. Uh, this will be coming out this is an advanced review copy. It's not going to be soft cover. It's going to be hard cover. Uh, Harper Collins, uh, Harper Teen, a division of Harper Collins, is going to be putting this out. It is my first uh, young adult book. It is my first book meant for uh, a teenage audience, older teenage audience. Do not get this uh, for your young kids because you're going to get taken away by DHS. Uh, this is uh, the big one, guys. This is, uh, look at that. An Author Who Knows How to Make Us Afraid by Clive Barker. I have a number of other uh, great uh, industry professionals and, uh, and, and horror authors and uh, filmmakers who have said very nice things about the book. And I can't wait to share that with you. This isn't out yet. This, is, this won't be out for the holiday. Uh, it's coming out August uh, 2020. Uh, and if you're watching this far into the future, it's out now. Go buy it. Uh, but you can pre-order it. And pre-orders really do help me out. I'll put the links down below. Uh, and I'll tell you a little bit more about the book uh, in some other videos, I'm sure gonna have tons of time to talk about it but thank you so much to everyone who's picked up the old books who's gonna check out the new books who's watched the channel who subscribed who told someone about it because i really really appreciate it that's it i'll see you next week uh with another movie and book pairing and we'll talk about something really fun have a great one guys Bye bye